back everybody as you can tell by the title of this we're going to do a budget diy brembo big break kit i'll walk through step by step how this is achieved and the parts involved in it stay tuned okay so here's the main components of this big break kit uh, what you see here is everything needed to do this break kit um, so we'll start off with the big the big item that everybody wants to know about it's the caliper this caliper is off of a 2010 to 2016 Hyundai Genesis Coupe with the track pack on it. They all have the Brembos. These are the front calipers off of that vehicle. When you get them, <clears throat> you do need to flip sides. So the driver's side on the um, Genesis is the passenger side on the Civic, so and vice versa. Um, these are already set up for the same hardware that Honda uses. I believe this is 12 by 125. So these inserts make it 12 by 125. A lot of the Brembo big brake kits that are out there that guys are doing DIY, they're using the Acura TL and you have to drill the spindle to the larger hardware. You don't have to do that with this setup. And this bolt spacing is exactly the same as the Honda as well. So all of this bolts directly onto the car. It's also got a banjo style brake line fitting just like the factory lines do as well so they bolt on without issue as well so one thing you will need to most likely do once you get this on here depending on how far your wheel bearing and hub is pressed into the spindle is possibly run a small spacer on these here to center the rotor in the caliper in my case i need a 1.5 or sorry a 0.5 millimeter shim to go in here to space it just right the next piece is the rotor uh, this is a Wagner rotor I got off Rock Auto um, nothing special about them they were you know $40 Canadian each um, so this is off a Nissan Rogue with third row seat the with third row seat part is very important because that's the one of the big uh, brakes. This is a 12.6 inch rotor uh, and quite a bit thicker than the regular Rogue from what I understand. 5 on 114 bolt spacing, so just like the Integra Type R 5 lug. You do need to machine the center bore down though. Um, this is 68 millimeter center bore. The Integra is 70.2 roughly. Um, when I had my hubs out getting doing the wheel bearings, I had a friend of mine at a machine shop machine my hubs down so that they fit these rotors. If you're not doing wheel bearings at that time and you're not worried about having something you can quickly change out at a track, you could get these rotors machined to fit. Just be aware that if you have an issue with rotors, you will have to get another set machined before you put them on the car. Um, the caliper, I got these off of eBay as single units. It was much cheaper to get them as single units. When they were paired up, they were uh, about 50% more. So one of these rotors cost me $120 US. The other one cost me $170 US. If I was to get them together as a pair, they seemed to be going for about $400 US. So saved a bit of money that way, a little tip for everyone. Moving on from all that, we're tying it all together with another set of G-Lock brake pads. These are their R16 compound. Um, this brake pad is very common, this backing plate. It's a 1001 backing plate uh, used on tons of vehicles. Most of the vehicles you see out there with factory Brembo brakes use this backing plate. Um, these are the R16s. They work extremely well at my local track that is known to be a brake killer. Um, these pads are very easy on your rotors uh, and the dust is non-corrosive so it doesn't damage your wheels. If you forget to wash your wheels after an event and it goes five days and they get some rain on it, you can just go out, rinse it off, do a normal wash and it's no big deal. It's not like the corrosive pad compounds that eat and etch into the wheel finish. These will not do that. Uh, I get these from the Canadian distributor Ewald Performance. Um, Fantastic guy to deal with, very knowledgeable about brakes, and he's local to me, so that works in my favor as well. This is my third set of G-Lock brake pads now, and I'm extremely happy with the way they perform. So we'll go ahead and get this bolted up onto the car.
Okay, so here I've got the caliper bolted on to the uh, Integra Type R um, spindle. Uh, just to reference this, this spindle is the same as a CRV uh, spindle as well. Um, I'm using this spindle because it's got the larger wheel bearings that have also got the larger shafts in them. These are uh, 36 mil nut shaft um, that is used in a lot of case swaps. So that's why I have these in here. You could use the normal USDM uh, setup in here as well, but just so it answers any questions about this. So as you can see, the caliper is bolted directly onto the ears here. You can see the hardware's in and everything lines up as it should. So that's the caliper bolted on. I just wanted to do that quickly to show uh, without the rotor on that it does all fit together. Um, so we'll move on to the uh, rotor and caliper on together. Uh, one other note here before I go ahead and put the rotor on is I was saying that you needed to machine a part on the hub. This is it here. That's all that's that's the only machining that's really needed on this setup. Uh, in comparison to a lot of the other custom big brake kits and stuff, uh, really simple. So. Okay, there we go. We have the rotor and the caliper all directly bolted onto the car. And we'll move on to the brake line. There you go, a virtually bolt-on big brake kit for a Honda Civic Acura Integra. Um, 
So yeah, there we go. We'll put brake pads on and get everything else situated. Okay, when we were talking earlier, I said that there was possibly a need to put a shim between the caliper and the spindle to center the rotor in the caliper. So you can't tell on the camera, I don't think, but the uh, caliper is slightly too far inboard. So you can measure it, just grab a veneer caliper, set it in here, measure your inside. So we're 18.25 millimeters on the inside and on the outside we're 17.26. So what you want to do is that's about a millimeter extra on this side. We want to split the difference. So we need a half millimeter spacer between the caliper and the spindle to move the caliper this way just a bit to take up that gap so that it's equal distance. Okay, so I just thought I'd cover that off quickly for everyone. Now we'll move on to getting the pads into uh, these calipers. So we'll grab our pads. It's really straightforward with this uh, caliper setup uh, with these pads. So we take our G-Lock brake pads, slide them in here. You obviously want to make sure that you thoroughly cleaned your rotor to get any of the uh, shipping grease off. Uh, you don't want to have that contaminating your brake pads. Uh, that'd be bad news. So <clears throat> take our pins, slide them through, One. two, and then we just tap our pins in. And that's all that's required. Uh, so once I get these half mil uh, shims for the caliper and uh, spindle to get this perfectly centered, then I will get this all fully buttoned up. I do have a company that's reached out to me uh, that makes a titanium plate that actually goes between the brake pad and the caliper. Uh, so working with them right now, but uh, if I do pick up a set of those, I'll go ahead and show you the product and put them in here and we'll see if they live up to their claims. So okay, you'll have to go through and bleed it from here. Uh, in this setup, I run Motul RBF 600. <clears throat> I haven't had any problem with that brake fluid. There is better stuff out there, I know, but uh, I just flush the brake system every third track event anyways. Um, so it keeps the fluid fresh. It's relatively inexpensive and I can get it easily locally here. So, all right, for everyone that made it this far, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, yeah, budget big break kit. Uh, really happy with the way this came together. L really looking forward to testing the performance on the track this year. Uh, I will provide feedback uh, once I have tried this at the track. So, stay tuned, like, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you uh, have any questions or any feedback. Talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.